Hello, good afternoon everyone. I am Samir Ahmed. I secured All India Rank 193 in Civil Services 2019. And I am here with you to have uh, a discussion on specifically focusing on the answer writing for GS. So because most of the people ask that how a good answer should be written and answer writing is what gets you marks despite whatever you may know the important thing is how do you present it in a manner which is appealing to the examiner and easier for you to present as well. So uh, in your questions you can ask me about any specific paper but right now I will just give an overview on uh, the structuring and the content of answer writing which I used to follow in general for all of the papers from GS1 to GS4 and then I'll also talk about essay fine so first of all your answer should always have the uh, basic structure which is the introduction introduction then you have the main body and then the conclusion now this is the broad three things that we need to follow now I'll go into what exactly is a good introduction because people always feel that there is a, an issue on how to start your answer and because starting an answer is always an inertia I'll focus on in, in writing an introduction now a good introduction can be of three kinds first of all uh, it can start off with a good definition a good definition a good definition of the question I'll discuss one sample question as well so that you will be able to understand better so either you start with a good definition a good data point a good data point or if you have a historical background of the topic that has been asked so either of the three is a good uh, start to a question now people often wonder how do we collect good data points on all uh, such a diverse range of topics it seems difficult at first but the thing is that it is easy if you follow a method uh, of uh, creating small notes on each subtopic of the GS paper there are four GS papers GS 1 to 4 now for GS 1 to 4 you have subtopics mentioned within the UPSC syllabus now for each subtopic I would advise you to make two to three page pages of short notes this these short notes can be made from any newspaper or current affair magazine or standard book a collation of all these which can be used to write a good introduction because when you make short notes of topics from GS1 to 4 for example in GS1 you have a topic suppose say on women issues now if there is a news which has some data related to say the number of missing women or the health of women number of anemic women or what kind of difficulties women face or a question on children so while preparing these two to three pages of short notes collect data points data points and uh, reports report names and uh, international inter international uh, uh, you have international organizations international organizations giving uh, their uh, uh, reports so using 
in th these two to three pages when you collect these data points and you have report names and you have the analysis of international organizations on how the condition of women are or how the condition of children are it will help you write a good introduction so this is what i used to follow for introduction now before i come to main body i'll talk about conclusion because introduction and conclusion can always be prepared beforehand because upsc always asks question from a particular subtopic if you have previous year papers you can go through the questions and you can exactly identify which question has been asked from which subtopic so if each subtopic is prepared so introduction and conclusion to each of the questions will automatically be prepared and that saves you a lot of time in examination where you have only 7 to 8 minutes dedicated to one particular question so for uh, short notes for introduction you can use these three and for conclusion you you in the in these short notes for conclusion you can have a uh, few way forward points on each subtopic way forward way forward points okay if there is a question on water issue if there is a particular subtopic within the upsc syllabus of water issue so for the introduction you can note data points like what is the condition of reservoirs in india or what is the connection or what is the situation uh, of the connectivity of pipelines in india so that would come in your introduction and your conclusion could should have two things the first is a broad way forward like what should india now do as a conclusionary remark and the second thing should be an optimistic ending which highlights that yes our constitutional value system our cultural value system and our way of life is conducive for bringing about such change so that the examiner feels that you are not a person who only looks at the negative side but also has a positive approach so ending with an optimistic note now conclusion and introduction these two can easily be prepared if you have prepared each subtopic of gs 1 to 4 for 2 uh, to 3 pages don't make lengthy notes don't make notes of one whole notebook for one topic no because you have to write your answers in 200 to 250 words and not more than one question comes from one subtopic maximum one question comes from one sub topic so 200 words is enough and introduction and conclusion is done when you when your notes are prepared now for the main body main body should be written in a manner which i prefer as point point format point and sub heading format so i'll go to the next page so for main body make subheadings which which clearly uh, identifies the parts of the question if the question clearly has two parts or three parts make two subheadings or three subheadings and if you feel the question does not have any particular part and is a one part question still you can make one subheading at least which uh, captures the essence of the question which has been asked because making subheading reflects that you have got the essence of the question and once the examiner knows that you have got the essence of the question it becomes easier for him to check and it becomes easier for him to give you a better marks so you write subheadings and within the subheadings write points Uh, uh, the main uh, the main body should be written point wise sorry yeah and written point wise now there are two benefits of writing point wise first of all it will be clear in your mind what are the kind of points you have written because remember writing redundant stuff is not going to fetch you marks writing 
I mean this attitude that if I film all the three pages it is going to somehow secure me better marks is a wrong conception that is not true if if you know relevant stuff and even if you write out of three pages two pages you will get good marks so writing point wise will allow you to first of all monitor what are the kind of points you have written already and it will allow the examiner to see that okay you have written five different points so that that helps you as well as the examiner so making subheadings and writing point wise this is most important for main body now main body uh, definitely has to be written according to the need of the question so you cannot prepare that beforehand and main body in gs papers are topics are from from current affairs current affairs or standard books either from whatever is covered in the standard books or those point those things which are not covered in the standard books you can use your uh, subtopics notes that you have prepared for introduction and conclusion and for main body you can use current affair material so uh, these are the two topics from where it comes so these two you have to read to write good subheadings and points in your main body so this is the basic structure of answer writing introduction main body and conclusion now uh, this is for gs 1 2 3 more broadly and for gs 4 i would say that gs 4 is a little bit tricky and uh, people usually say that you need to read this book and that book i don't think you need to read many books for gs 4 for gs 4 particularly for gs4 particularly i would say follow write short notes on each subtopic of the syllabus each of the subtopics are very uh, precise and it gives you the keywords which UPSC constantly uses to ask GS4 questions especially the part 1 the part A of the GS paper the part B is case study the part A is theory now the theory paper will always be from one of these keywords so always use uh, keywords if you have a short note now short note should not be such that you merely look at uh, some topic from the internet and do a copy paste of that stuff on your notebook no because ethics is a lot based on your own understanding what do you understand by integrity after reading three or four uh, different websites now three or four different source you f f online don't read any books just search integrity read a few articles about what is integrity and then write a short note on two to three pages on what do you understand is integrity along with few examples so making short notes on each subtopic and writing a few examples will help you cover gs4 without re at least the part one without covering any of the uh, without the need for going into detailed study of books now for the part b which is the case study part this is for part a Obviously for part B also you have to use these concepts like uh, the concept of integrity, honesty, leadership, empathy and all these terms have to be used in your part B as well. For part B also you have to use concepts of use, use concepts of part a use concepts of part a and then how do you structure your case study that is important now i feel the best way to understand how to structure a case study is to read topper's answer sheet when you read these answer sheets 
you will automatically get a hang of the kind of thing or the kind of elements which they have used to introduce the case study how they proceeded in the case study what are the options that they provide in the ethical judgment and how do they reach to a conclusion which is balanced as well as has a morally superior position so reading topper's answer will uh, uh, after and but obviously after understanding these concepts after understanding concepts of part a you use those concepts and apply them to write case studies in part b for understanding the structure of writing an answer you can refer to the topper's answer sheet now this is for uh, ethics paper now for essay for essay for essay first of all uh, i would recommend don't write an essay because you feel that this is a topic which is easy no easy it may seem easy but essay requires your own horizontal expansion of thoughts on a particular topic because you don't have to write in 200 words you need to write a topic in 1200 words now writing in 1200 words cannot merely be dumping of facts that i know so many facts about health so let me write an essay on health no essay should always be a topic which creates or generates a lot of interest in you and this uh, this will allow you to explore different elements within the essay so what my approach for writing essay was that i used to write an introduction I, i'm not going to tell you about the entire essay but the introduction about of the essay the introduction of the essay for me uh, i mean uh, definitely after uh, um, all those standard things which people say that use quotation use quotes or use story or use uh, anecdotes okay those are fine but after quote and story and anecdote i believe a good introduction should or the few introducing paragraphs like first of all don't write huge paragraphs don't write paragraphs more than three four lines so the few, one, few introducing paragraphs should give an outline on what your essay is going to be about if you if there is an essay on for example say uh, this year there was an essay which i wrote on biased media is a threat to democracy now biased media threat to democracy now you need to first make an outline in your mind that what what do you and to make an outline the easiest thing is act as a reader while reading this topic what would you want to read in this topic as a reader not as a writer but as a reader so anyone would first want to know that why why is media related to democracy why is media related to democracy and how does media what is the function of media and how does that function enhance democracy and how diminishing that function threatens democracy then you can go on to uh, the reasons and causes of why media is becoming biased and how it is creating a threat for democracy and then you can go on to explore how what are the possible solutions so basically create an outline outline of four five points that what what am i going to discuss five to six main sub headings should be prepared in your structure that these are the five six broad sub headings under which i am going to write this makes essay writing very easy it makes it very easy because once you have divided your essay in five six words five six sub topics now you have to write only 200 words for each and it will become a 1200 word essay so not even 200 you will have to because already introduction you will write of suppose 100 words 100 200 words but say uh, maximum 170 170 less than 200 words will cover your complete essay for if you create the subtopics and when you have created this subtopic in your introducing paragraphs create an outline for the reader for your examiner that these are the things which i am going to cover and you can clearly write that this essay is going to first explore 
for example the relation between media and democracy or first how information affects media or how information uh, affects democracy so whatever is your subtopic you can say that okay first i'm going to discuss this followed by this then this then this in one paragraph this will allow the reader to have a complete framework of your essay and most of the times they will understand okay fine this these are the things he has to cover and when you start writing your essay i used to make sub points as well sub sub points sorry sub headings on on the basis of these five six sub subtopics so you make subheadings after you have in given your introduction through quote story anecdote whatever then you in your next few introducing paragraphs after giving a slight background of the topic after giving one paragraph background of topic outline what are you going to write in your essay and after outlining your essay start your essay with your particular subtopics subheadings and always try to maintain a flow between different subheadings like the first subheading should have some connectivity with the second not first is about uh, say political factors and then you directly jump onto environmental factors no if you are writing about political factors the next uh, logical thing would be to talk about society to talk about history to talk about culture not environment and geography so these uh, there should be a connectivity in the subheadings connectivity in your paragraph and make 5 to 6 subheadings so i think this is the main structure of gs 1 to 4 and sa and one more thing which i would like to mention is that uh, for making these subheadings which i said uh, at the beginning of this uh, video or at the beginning of my session that uh, makes small subheadings now for making small subheadings uh, you can note now when you are noting Uh, different data or facts about those particular subheadings you don't need to read so many material just stick to one for example i stick to only the hindu newspaper for noting down those things now how i used to note down was i created four notebooks one for each one for each gs one for each one for each gs and write syllabus of entire gs on the first page of that notebook after you have written the syllabus index the syllabus from say say index the syllabus from 1 to 14 and after that after you have completed indexing then you when you have a new suppose related to paper 1 topic 1 so you open the notebook for paper 1 uh, write 1.1 and then write whatever the news is then suppose you have uh, a second news which you have to write from paper 1 but it is related to topic 6 so write 6.1 similarly if a second news comes on the first topic write 1.2 and this will allow you to have an indexed way of writing your uh, news material and paper wise and indexing and this will help you a lot before the examination so i think i have covered mostly about how to write gs how to make notes on gs and how to uh, frame an essay and how to write a case study so i'll uh, look into uh, the questions that you have been asking if there's any specific questions uh i'll look at it hmm so someone has asked uh, how many years of current affairs are to be read i think one year of current affairs is more than enough both for mains and prelims one year is more than enough but remember that when you read something don't read it only one time the biggest problem in this examination is that people expand their source the 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 method of studying for this exam is to uh, consolidate your source and expand your revision the more times you revise and the lesser source you have the better you will perform in the examination so don't go for reading 3 years of current affairs from five different sources someone has asked book for mains history 
so i think books any standard book can be followed don't make it a burden to select one particular book any book can be followed but the thing is that always read that book multiple times so that in examination you don't have a problem of recalling the problem is never of content but of recalling the content and recalling becomes a problem when you start reading from seven eight sources now suggest book list for economy again economy is like i had read a, a book of uh, uh, vivek singh sir and i found that to be good you can use that because that has already created uh, subdivisions and subtopics based on gs syllabus so that is good enough i think book list for optional psir no need for any book in optional psir optional psir does not require any book for optional psir the maximum you can do is after reading ma'am's notes condense those notes condense them into two notebooks maximum one for paper 1 and one for paper 2 not more than that so condense them into two notebooks and after condensing read the hindu newspaper in the hindu newspaper you will get a lot of scholarly editorials from many scholars who keep writing on ir like you have happy mon jacob or people like uh, many other people they keep writing uh, uh, some uh, uh, national security experts also keep writing sometimes you have retired air marshals writing so you can just uh, within that notebook which you have in which you have condensed ma'am's notes within that particular sub topic of which the editorial belongs For suppose the editorial has come on nuclear issue so within ma'am's notes that nuclear issue part add one more opinion of that scholar that is the maximum value addition that you can do to ma'am's notes otherwise you don't need to do much and this both for uh, paper 1 and paper 2 the dynamic part can easily be covered from the editorial section by writing the name of the scholar and their opinion shortly this will add to the other opinions which ma'am has already given in her notebook uh should i make notes for newspaper no i don't think you should make notes for newspaper throughout the year but as i told you uh, just a few minutes ago when you are making uh, one notebook for each gs and one for each gs and you have after writing all the uh, sub topics from 1 to 14 say there are 14 sub topics after writing from 1 to 14 you can uh, uh, note down the important current affairs between prelims and mains the three months between prelims and mains that is enough for collecting all these news and all these other things uh, but the important thing is not writing down in collection but the organization of your notes because if it is not organized at the end revision becomes a hassle so make notes from any newspaper but only between prelims and mains before prelims focus on uh, any current affair magazine that is more than enough any current affair magazine but always revise that magazine four to five times before the exam that is very important how to handle philosophical essay now if you feel that philosophical essays are difficult for you i think uh try to have discussion on philosophical topics among your friends and not a discussion uh, which has uh, i mean not a very uh, a general discussion but a discussion which has philosophical opinions like if some of your friend has this these ideas on suppose say uh, karl marx or suppose say plato or socrates or john locke discuss with them on general topics whatever you seeing around you for example you see an oppression so as you see some oppression around you try to imagine uh, what is the philosophical reason behind the oppression that is for example i always had this in mind that whatever discrimination happens in society this was my own conclusion whatever ha- discrimination happens in society is because of imbalance in power relation now when you have this idea that okay imbalance in power relation is a philosophical concept which can be applied to any so- sort of essay which demands Uh, an analysis on discrimination so keep your mind open and when whenever you see a topic in newspaper 
have a philosophical discussion as well apart from merely factual discussions oh these are the five facts within this also try to have a philosophical uh, outlook towards that essay or oh, sorry towards that uh, article or newspaper or the book or the material that you are reading i mean i'm not saying invest 5 6 hours having philosophical discussions but if you inculcate this you will observe that after a year or so when you are about to give your mains you will feel that every topic can be analyzed philosophically over a period of time after you have inculcated this habit uh, can we read only the important articles in hindu see in the hindu definitely you have to read according to the subtopics of gs as i told you the news has to be noted under subtopics of gs if it is from gs2 topic 4 then you have to write it in notebook of gs2 under topic 2.1 so definitely when you have that indexing in your mind of what 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 are the topics within each gs paper you automatically will have your mind searching for those uh, news articles which are representative of these topics so that becomes easy and yes editorials should be read sincerely especially during the period of prelims to mains and if you are not good with answer writing study editorials for at least 2 years because editorials will allow you to form opinion it will allow you to structure your answer they will allow you to write things in a critical fashion which is required in essay which is required in gs papers to critically analyze and to critically think about a topic so reading newspapers reading newspaper will become very easy if you make four notebooks for gs and uh, and make a uh, gs syllabus list because once you have that syllabus in your mind your your mind will automatically grasp those news which are related to civil service or uh, uh, gs papers 1 to 4 book list for gs2 yeah gs2 lakshmikanth is good enough but i had Uh, studied from uh, dd basu but you don't need to study necessarily from dd basu because some people may find it difficult to study but since that book has a little philosophical outlook towards our constitution not merely jotting down of uh, uh, points like you have in lakshmikant lakshmikant is a very objective and good book but if you want to have a little philosophical outlook and you don't find it cumbersome then it's fine if you find it cumbersome the lakshmikant is more than enough for a gs2 paper and if you are taking psir as your optional a lot of syllabus of psir paper 1 part b is covered in gs2 i mean that helped me in fact one question one question this year i think it came in both the papers uh in the optional in gs paper 2 as well as uh you have um, psir paper i think if i find it uh Uh, i'll see i'll tell you wait a second yes question number 12 of gs2 parliament's power to amend the constitution is a limited power and it cannot be enlarged into absolute power in the light of this statement explain whether parliament under article 368 of the constitution can destroy the basic structure of the constitution by expanding its amending power now in gs2 paper you need to write supreme court judgments now where do you get the supreme court judgments again within the newspaper when you read newspapers and editorials you get a lot of supreme court judgment references start noting down in your gs2 book under that particular sub topic if there is a judgment on hunger and poverty note it down under hunger and poverty if there is a judgment on, uh, on suppose religious issue then write it down under uh, social issues so you can note down supreme court judgments from the news we don't need to go to 3 4 5 sources okay i'll note down all these supreme court judgment no all the supreme court judgments are covered in editorials very well and those are relevant also so instead of noting down hundreds of uh, case studies of uh, sorry supreme court judgments note down 20 25 30 30 supreme court unique supreme court judgments which keep coming within the editorials apart from all those standard keshavananda bharti and stuff those everyone know so this question number 12 in gs2 and i'll tell you in the psir paper i'll show you see in the psir paper see the psir paper question number 8a 
is also similar. The basic structure doctrine is implicit in the Indian constitution. The Supreme Court has only given it an explicit form. So, whether, super, whether uh, uh, fund, uh, basic structure basic structure is implicit or explicit has been asked in PSIR uh, paper 1 question number 8a in part b and in GS2 question number 12 also you have a similar question whether the parliament can uh, destroy the basic structure. So implicit and explicit and destroying are have almost the same tone if it is already implicit you cannot destroy it. So implicit, explicit and destroying have almost the same tonation so, uh, and a lot of ideas uh, from PSIR you can use in GS2 it's not a problem or uh, don't use the name of the scholars and stuff but use uh, the ideas because it will help you a lot in uh, uh, even in GS1 there will be a lot of questions on women movement or peasant movement uh, in uh, post-independence India all those are covered in GS2 uh, notes which ma'am had given you have clearly human right movement and uh, women's movement environment movement labor movement women's movement all of them are clearly mentioned so it will help you a lot if you have taken PSI GS2 paper becomes relatively very easy and uh, what are the other question book list for GS3 I have already told GS, GS3 is environment and economics so economics you can cover from uh, uh, Vivek Singh sir's book and uh, environment from Shankar IS and rest other topics like security and all you can make subtopics. So I think uh, this will be enough from my side and uh, best of luck for your preparation. Uh, thank you. Thank you.